like to welcome my guest, Seth Carpenter, U.S. Chief Economist at UBS. Seth, thanks for joining me. Let's get right thanks into it. Me. You know, big news today. You're welcome, and I know you're going to have good things. You have a nice background at the Fed in various areas. Over 16 trillion now negative. Uh, Financial Times quoted today that you know that's a little over 30 percent of all securities in the world are negative rates. I know that number rises dramatically if you pull out U.S. securities because none of them are negative. What's your <laughs> thought on that and how that will affect uh, any future policy by our central bank specifically, but additional policies by others? I mean, it's truly remarkable that you could have negative interest rates across so many different markets and at so such long maturities. I think it has to matter as part of what's pulling down longer term interest rates here in the U.S., and thinking about what that means in the future for policy easing, there's no question that starting with now the federal funds rate just above 2 percent, if the Fed needed to ease aggressively like in past uh, easing cycles, there's just less room for them to cut rates with interest rates being as low as they are now. A decent chunk of the accommodation in financial markets that would come is already there. So they do have less space to go at this point. You know, Seth, here's what I find remarkable. Take today is a case study in markets, okay? We had some pretty good data out today. Richmond Fed turned back positive. Uh, consumer confidence, a solid number, like historically solid. There aren't that many 134s and higher numbers in that series. And yet, yields are dropping like a rock again. We're down seven basis points on the long end. Does that make any sense to you? So there are just so many different, as Chair Powell would say, cross currents going on in the economy. So the consumer has been holding up reasonably well uh, for most of this time. The turnaround in one manufacturing survey, while encouraging, doesn't tell you the whole story. Earlier this week, we got the core capital goods shipments data that go into equipment investing, and that was a lousy, lousy number. And so it really does show that there are lots of different risks everywhere. I think the global circumstances are looking pretty bleak. Uh, and this escalation in the trade war that Trump announced by increasing tariffs across the board by another five percentage points, that's only going to make things worse. We have estimates that we published last week about how much more that's going to take off of GDP, at least 30 basis points, if not more, from the level of GDP. And if that all comes, say, following the holiday uh, season, because so many more of these new tariffs are on consumer goods, it's going to hit spending pretty aggressively. You know, having said all that, and I see how the big picture of trade affects the global economy, the actual numbers of trade with China aren't that big. But at the end of the day, the consumer's holding up well. We're a consumption-driven economy, and Atlanta GDP now moved up to 2.3. If you look at the years under Barack that we had after the credit crisis, boy, you couldn't get anywhere uh, much above 2%. <laughs> aren't we underrating the fact that we're doing as well, considering all the issues you just raised? Uh, maybe. I mean, the economy had been growing pretty strongly last year for a while, and then it came off really sharply in the fourth quarter of last year, and domestic spending in the first quarter of this year was pretty weak as well. I think uh, the comparison, though, is hard. You had the biggest tax cut you've seen in God knows how long. You had a massive increase in federal spending. All of that should have led to a ripping economy. And so now what we see is the economy is facing sort of like a boxer in a match, a series of these body shots from these tariff escalations. And the question becomes, at what point does the economy start to stagger. Uh, I am very worried about this last Listen, increase. Go ahead. We're out of time, Seth. I'm going to have to leave it there, but I just want viewers to picture Sylvester Stallone as Rocky. You could take a lot of punches and still win the fight.